so uh, previously when we talk about mixing colors we've looked at the color wheel and we've kind of looked at those natural harmonious relationships like complementary split complementary but there's another thing we can steal from we can look at palettes from the past um, in art history people use the colors they had access to so the pigments that were available um, this is like the Edo art period and they just used what was available the minerals that they knew how to turn into artwork um, and they had these amazing charts and, and maps and these great colored like the plum blossom mouse gray and the pure crimson um, that then if we wanted to we could look at the colors they used and do a palette based on that um, and so that's what we're going to do this this class we are going to look at three periods look at all these palettes and just steal what they learned was successful in these combinations we're going to look at impressionism um, Dutch Golden Age and Renaissance, and I'm going to bring in the colors we need for those. You're going to, I'm going to pre-make your palettes, um, and then we are going to experiment. So what happens is, if we start with the palette that we know they used, um, just by virtue of playing with those colors, we kind of know they're going to work well together. We're going to be able to make some amazing grays, some amazing blues, earth tones, and so if we take that Dutch, sorry, airplane. If we take that Dutch palette, um, like I did here, you're just naturally going to kind of have harmonious things. Same with if we use the palette that Impressionist painters use. So let's look at what some of these colors are. Impressionism, Cobalt Blue, Viridian Green, Titanium White, Non-Cadmium Yellow or Cadmium, Ultramarine Blue, and Elers Elizarin. I can't say that. Um, and those are what we're going to use. And then once you think of this palette, you look at all of the images from that era, and you realize, oh yeah, they basically used, you know, repeated the same colors over and over. Um, and it's harmonious. So if you don't feel like being limited to your, your color wheel, what you can do is you can even look up, you can Google your favorite art movement and probably find some palettes from that era. Um, so we actually, I'm going to bring in these exact colors we know were used. Naples yellow, black, ultramarine blue, which used to be called something else, alizarin red, chromium oxide, vermilion, white, and burnt umber that will be a renaissance palette and then as you see you notice like they uh, yeah they use the same colors over and over either because that's what they had access to or that was the style or that was what her harmonious probably because that's what they had access to mainly but yeah so we can do we will be turning renaissance palette of these colors um, and then the dutch golden era which is a darker moodier um use some of the same colors but much much darker black um yellow ochre, raw umber, vermilion red, alizarin crimson, chromium oxide, and titanium white. You'll see some of these used again. But again, and then you'll see we use some darker browns, a lot more browns than in the other movements in here, and you see that in the mixing. So then what we're going to do is we are going to then have a palette for each of those um, periods. There's the misspelled renaissance. Um, and then we're going to play with it. We are going to mix a lot of colors using that and, and this is going to be no right or wrong we're just going to be painting still lifes of, of, of my fake fruit so it's a simple shapes really the focus will be how many amazing colors can I make and then how will I use what I know about warm and cool and um, you know contrasting colors and all of that what will I how will I use these uh, these renaissance um, Dutch golden era and impressionism palettes to create something awesome and so this is just me playing with what do I, what happens when I mix the you know vermilion with actually I think that's alizarin with um, the Naples yellow and then you add some white to it and I think what by limiting you to the color wheel I've kind of limited your idea of what kind of how vast your colors could be as we were talking last week some people only have red yellow and blue on their palette and they build off of that um, but this is this is going to show you. Look at that gray. You can mix amazing colors. Um, so the goal tomorrow is to mix as many colors as you can, and then figure out how to um, use them in your painting in an interesting way. But you can even start to feel like when you look at this, you it feels like a Renaissance painting colors, which we're all way more familiar with than we think. Um, and this is uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to mix. Um, you're not going to do all of them. I think we'll probably only have time to do two movements each person. We'll see. I don't know. Some of you are fast. But the goal will be tomorrow to expand your idea of what color mixing is beyond just the color wheel. Um, 
So none of these are going to be harmonious on the color mill naturally, all of them, but they will work out. And so what I'm doing in this video is what we're going to be doing tomorrow, and then we're going to take these colors and paint fruit. So obviously your fruit might be not related to the actual um, color of the fruit. So we're, you might not have a, a yellow banana. You might have a purple banana and a mossy green background and a green cherry or whatever, and that's going to be awesome. Um, I think that I have not done enough color mixing, and I thought this would be slightly more fun than doing the color swatches that we talked about. I think you should all do the color swatches at home, but this is, I think, an elevated version of that. Um, yeah, and so basically we're just going to be doing that all of tomorrow, and I think it's going to be really fun. So you don't even have to bring your paint, because I'm going to make your palettes for you. Um, but bring brushes and yourselves. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye.